Three decades ago, she was one of Hollywood's blonde bombshells and starred in movies like Baby Doll and Giant. And then came a few years of emotional turmoil and self-exile to uh, Europe. And uh, out she came with her uh, first novel. But apparently she wrote a book before that called uh, Baby Doll, Her True Life Story, which uh, raised a lot of eyebrows and got a lot of critical acclaim. And uh, then she segued into this novel called A Roman Tale, which is just out and also has this book out. I mean, it's un unusual that an author would have the two books out together, but uh, here are her adventures in Africa, another true romantic adventure by Carol Baker. So all of a sudden, uh, the author of three books and a fine uh, acting career as well, and here's the lovely Carol Baker. How you doing? Hi. Nice to see you. Mm, lovely to see yeah, you. Come on in and sit down. You know, we didn't get a chance to talk about your very first book, Baby Doll, but that was the true life of Carol Baker. Yes, huh? yes. That was uh, maybe the most difficult to write. Oh, I'll bet. Mm. They always are when you've got to tell or reveal as much as you can about yourself. Well, the thing is that I actually didn't really want to write an autobiography, but I wanted to write, and I knew that that would be the easiest thing to get published. Mm -hmm. And it has worked out well because I got such good reviews that they've trusted me to write two other books. Well, you know, did you always know you had this talent? No, I, I think I always wanted to write, but I think I was a little bit self-conscious about it. I never had um, a formal education, uh, college mm -hmm. and so forth, and I've always had such respect for writing that it was... Um, while I could go out and say, even before I started to act, yes, I'm an actress... Uh, I couldn't really say I'm a writer. I'm a writer. That takes a lot of guts, it doesn't does, it? It does, yes. Even when you can write. And then when did you discover that you had this ability? Well, when I started to write the autobiography, as I said, because I wanted to write, uh, I had, you know, I had no feelings about bringing someone else in on it. If I hadn't been able to organize the material sure. or whatever, I would have uh, asked someone to help me. But as I got into one story after another and so forth, I found that I liked it very much. And uh, when the first draft was read, um, the corrections that had to be made were rather easy, ones that I could do. So I wrote it all by myself. Good for you. Mm -hmm. A lot of satisfaction, I'll bet. And yeah. then to be so well received. You know, you had a period of, of your life, as some of us do, where it doesn't go your way. Uh, do you regret not turning to this a little sooner? Yes, I wish I had. I don't know why it takes me so long to get around to everything. <laughs> no, I wish I had started writing years ago because now I say to myself, well, how many years have I got left to write? How many books can I turn out? That's why I'm turning them out so Boy, fast. Boy, and you sure are. We got two of them right here. I mean, I, I don't know which to turn to first, but both of them are novels, right? No, uh, To Africa with Love is autobiographical. I've spent um, many times in Africa, but this was probably my most special trip. Mm -hmm. It, uh, because of the young man that I went with, who was 16 years my junior, an epileptic, and the adventures that we had, and this wonderful romance, which only lasted at the time of our African trip. Were you there to make a movie? Well, originally I went to make uh, a movie with Robert Mitchum called Mr. Moses. Right. That was years before, and uh, the press were uh, accusing us of having a love affair. You and Mitchum? Yes. <laughs> were you? No. Oh, come on, Carol. No, we weren't. Sure. Bob doesn't care. <laughs> no. Well, Mitch, Mitch would be a little, uh, you know, no, good about it. it. What he said about it was that uh, well, I said to him, you know, the world press is accusing us of having an affair. And he said, gee, I'm sorry I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mitch. No, who I fell in love with was Africa. Yeah. Oh, I hear it's marvelous. Yeah. So this was around 1970, 71 when you this, were there, This huh? special trip was in 71. And this is that story. And this yeah. young man, what happened to him? Well, the thing is that uh, he was 16 years younger than me um, as he had epilepsy so badly. <clears throat> and it made him a rather exuberant, uh, extraordinary character. I knew that the romance wouldn't... Uh, passed the test of civilization. Uh -huh. When we were out in the wild, it was great. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was a woman with a career and children and so forth. So it was a short-lived romance, but a very happy one. You also had some kind of harrowing experiences there, too. Weren't you so hungry that you well, yes. ate things that you ordinarily <laughs> wouldn't eat, not even at wild man's table? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, not even at Wild Man's <laughs> Table. Uh, we were stranded on Cousin Island, which is a part of the Seychelles in the Indian Ocean. And we had this freak tide on this island where the um, coral reef was absolutely treacherous. So the boat could not get in to get us out. And uh, after three days, the water ran out. That was the serious thing, because the food, after a while, the hunger pains stop, and you become sort of a bit delirious. But I thought, how am I going to survive on this island without water? Mm -hmm. So I was sitting against a palm tree, thinking about this, and suddenly, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a lizard. Now, the interesting thing about this lizard was that I didn't say to myself, Gee, you know, if I captured that lizard and bit off its head and sucked out the juices, I could survive. The interesting thing was that after three days, I watched him, and he looked absolutely delicious. Wow. Del you were hungry. Delicious, yes. And it tasted good. And you grabbed him and did yeah. exactly what you thought you were going yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. mm. Again, you could never do that. No, no, I wouldn't like kind of it to situation. be served to me today. <laughs> it's a fascinating story, it really is. And uh, now, let's move on to this next one, which is a Roman tale, and this is the novel. And this is about an American actress in her 30s who has been slightly used and battered around in Hollywood and leaves for, sells her house, leaves for Italy to start a new career and a new life, mm -hmm. which is also what you did. That's right. In that sense, uh, it was autobiographical. But um, the, uh, the whole scene that went on in Italy in the 70s, and that was their big, booming film industry. La Dolce Vita and all of La that, La Dolce right? Vita with lots of celebrities there and so forth. And, and as there was such a, a freewheeling society, I thought, I better write this as a novel. <laughs> 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 this, this can't be nonfiction. This has to be fiction. Let's be on the safe side. Here are some yeah. uh, pictures from movies that you made in Italy as well. The Italian look, as you, uh, as you the, said. Yeah, right? the Italian look. Well, the thing is that this was called Paranoia, this film. Um, they had to do movies around me, a blonde uh, American who comes and rents a villa, and then all sorts of mysterious things begin to happen uh -huh. to her. I'm not going to tell you the title of this one, I don't think. How many did you make over there? Oh, I made probably more movies there than I made in Hollywood because we used to turn out like four or five a year. It was okay. really booming. Well, that was good for you, right? Yeah. To get that kind of work? Uh... Yeah, it was wonderful for me. Yeah, this is called A Quiet Place to Kill. Do you ever see these movies? <laughs> uh, are they ever on? Yeah, uh... this is on American television, A Quiet Place to Kill. And the love scenes over there were uh, <laughs> a little more exotic, weren't they, in those years? Yeah, this is a film with Lee Van Cleef called Captain Apache. As you can see, he's holding a gun to my temple and I'm holding a knife to his What throat. is it that you want from each other? <laughs> <laughs> my God! Yeah, I like that still. Anyway, um, it's, a, it's a great story. It really is a lot of fun to read. Oh, thank and, uh, you. And it's going to be a great summertime book. Yeah. I actually, um, I was told to stop saying that it's a dirty book because it's funny, so therefore it becomes a body book. It's oh. told with humor. <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, I, listen, I, I think you'd be commended for switching careers the way you have and with no formal training in this area mm -hmm. to carve out a career as a writer. I think it's true. Yeah, I'm self-taught. Mm -hmm. Boy, you did great. Oh, I love and it. And it's nice meeting you. Thank, Thank you, you very much for today. Thank you. The name of the book again is A Roman Tale. And if you haven't had enough of Carol Baker, then how about the Africa with love, too? We'll be right back to talk about 